District. Please join me in welcoming Tom Dietrich to the keynote stage. Good morning, everyone. I am absolutely delighted to be here and, and see all of the faces in the crowd. Uh, uh, and also uh, really honored to be on this stage with such an amazing group of, of speakers that are, are yet to follow. So my comments will, will be brief, but uh, I really wanted to, uh, to start out and, and recognize all of the things and the, the power of the knowledge that's inside of this room. There are real challenges out there, but uh, I know we can absolutely overcome them given the collaboration we can enjoy at a time like this, uh, this week, uh, and all of the creativity that will come from, from that great, great interaction. Now, two years ago, I had the opportunity to be up on, on a stage uh, uh, at Distributech for a keynote address in, in San Antonio, and, and the lofty, very aspirational title of my talk at that time was uh, my five big predi predictions for, for the future. Um, I remember it quite vividly because uh, commuting home from that event, I, I w remember it uh, like it was yesterday. I, I, was in, I was on a conference call with our worldwide management team and it was during that call on the commute home from this event that uh, we made the decision that we were probably gonna have to send uh, uh, much of our, our global workforce uh, home to work from home with for what we thought was maybe a six, perhaps 12 week kind of time frame. Now, kind of ironic that the purpose of my talk uh, just hours before that decision was made was my five big predictions for, for the future. Let the record reflect, uh, um, we did not predict a, a global pandemic that would change a lot about how we work and, and how we, we interact. Uh, uh, so my, my career as a, as a prophet, obviously, uh, not, not, uh, not, not very successful, but uh, nonetheless, many of the themes that I talked about, those predictions are, are no longer uh, predictions, but are actual industry trends. So I thought it might be interesting to, uh, to take a step back and, and uh, dust off those old predictions and, and see where we stand today. The first one I want to talk about is, is volatility. Whether that volatility comes from cybersecurity, ransomware kind of threats, or, or whether it is because of uh, trade wars and uh, tariffs and, and border disruptions, all of those things are, are happening in the business community and around us, let alone uh, uh, things like uh, climate disruption or, or the rate of, of natural disasters. That the rate of any natural disaster now uh, on an annual basis is four times higher when it comes to a $1 billion plus kind of cost natural disaster, four times per year higher now than it was 40 years ago. 2021 was the third highest year for uh, named storms, and we just finished our, our sixth consecutive year with uh, above average Atlantic hurricane uh, uh, activity. All of that volatility is happening around our industry and around our business. Couple that with the fact that more and more things are being electrified. So the tolerance for outages, the, the, the tolerance for, for the lights not to come on when the, when the switch is flipped is much, much lower now than it ever has been. So what does that mean for us? What's the implication? Investment in resiliency and reliability and security have never been more important. And fortunately, we have uh, provisions like the, the uh, bipartisan infrastructure uh, uh, package, the uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, that really funds a lot of, uh, of new investment in this area. And together with the technology and the capability that all of our organizations provide, this can really change the landscape and build a new economic future for all of us. The second prediction that I made uh, back uh, several years ago had to do with proliferation of electric vehicles. This one, unlike the, the pandemic myths, uh, is absolutely no longer a prediction, but it is real. EV growth from 19 to 20 was about 40%. EV growth from 20 to 21 was 200%. First quarter results, despite all sorts of supply chain limitations in the background, uh, uh, we're on track to have more growth uh, again this year. This is really, really happening. Uh, this is even before we start to see a lot of electrification of fleets. Now think about uh, what an EV represents to, to the grid. It's the equivalent of, of perhaps a, a small house that just sort of moves around and randomly plugs into the grid. 
When that happens once or twice or three times, it's not that big a deal. But if you now start to think about the huge variable load that a, a electrification of a fleet uh, represents, we have an entirely different uh, uh, situation. Looking at it from a grid standpoint, there's, there's two uh, fundamental uh, separate but interrelated problems. There's charging, of course, getting the, the, uh, the actual uh, uh, power to the, the right location, but there's also charging management. If you're going to build a cost-effective solution to be able to power all of those EVs, you've got to be able to balance these things out. So knowing where they are, how they pop up, how it's going to work, and be able to balance that, uh, uh, that supply and demand on the distribution grid is a real opportunity for us to create a cost-effective and very reliable solution to enable this proliferation and revolution in the transportation sector. Third area that I talk about is growth and renewables. Um, 830-some billion kilowatts of electricity, roughly 21% of the uh, U.S. electrical power was generated by renewables in, in 2020. That number will grow to about 35% by 2035. So real growth in the renewable sector. That, of course, uh, needs to be followed by the transmission to get that uh, energy to where it needs to be, to the population centers, but also invest in the, in the distribution grid to be able to balance supply and demand and really understand what is, is happening at the distribution level. So if you combine those three uh, general trends that I talked about and look at it through the lens of the distribution uh, side of the business, what needs to happen, what will happen, and what we see is a tremendous growth in edge intelligence. What does that mean? Understanding what's happening at the edge of the grid, being able to understand it, measure it, and take action on it is a real growth area. More than 90% of our electrical AMI deployments today uh, ha include some type of edge intelligence. This notion of distributed intelligence, you've seen this movie before. It's very, very similar to a smartphone kind of application. You, you can download an agent into the endpoint, much the same as you could download an application into uh, your smartphone and be able to look for certain signals and be able to take certain actions at that moment in time. Today, we have more than 4.2 million of those DI-capable endpoints in the field running millions of applications, and we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can do. Whether we're talking grid-side applications, things like uh, looking for safety kinds of considerations, broken neutral or a high impedance connection, understanding what's happening with the, the phase angle or the power factor all the way out with much more granular data than we've ever seen before. Perhaps on the consumer side, understand, uh, help the consumer understand how they are using the product so that can better enable them to manage the situation in a postpaid or a prepaid kind of application. There are numerous applications and we see tremendous growth in this kind of capability. The fundamental idea is to be able to understand what's happening at the edge of the grid, transmit that information back for central repository and processing, but also be able to take action out at the edge of the grid. Each one of these kinds of things that I'm talking about generates more and more data to take advantage of. Instead of being able to have access to 40,000 data points uh, per month per endpoint for every uh, uh, endpoint in a network and being able to use exactly one to, to send someone a bill, now we have a very, very rich set of, of information that you can process and real-time analytics is a tremendous growth opportunity for all of us to be able to use this data much more effectively to take action, gain insight, and understand how to cost optimize and improve the reliability of the grid. This opens up new applications with machine learning and, and artificial intelligence that can fundamentally shift how we can use all of this data. The combination of these technologies creates a very, very different grid of the future. It is a living, breathing, agile bit of information. It is that industrial IoT network. That is the future of the grid. And how about if we all get to work and create that together? Thank you so much for your time. Have a great show.